all right guys jay here in today's tutorial we will be adding rotation to our character so that it smoothly rotates towards the direction it's moving are you ready let's do it This is a follow-up tutorial. If you have not watched my previous tutorial, I'll provide a link in the description below or somewhere on the side of this video which shows you how you can create a basic walking controller. As usual, I won't be writing the code as I've already done it beforehand. So I will be copy and pasting it and then explaining what it does line by line. I won't be explaining the codes that I've already explained in my previous video. So it's highly recommended that you actually watch it before watching this. Let's open up our walking controller in Visual Studio. Just a quick heads up. Anything under important stuff here. Oh, before that, let me increase the size of my code. Alright, just a quick heads up. Anything under here are important stuff that includes things that you actually need to initialize on start or on awake functions. Anything in here are private variables that are used for calculation logics to make the script work that you can't access outside of the script and anything in here are public variables that you can change in the inspector. So I like to keep all my variables in segments to keep things clean and organized. Alright, the first thing we are going to do is we are going to add a private enumerator, the facing direction. This is the facing direction of the player character whether he looks at north, south, east or west. The default facing direction facing will be facing direction dot south. Let's add another private vector tree. Previous walk velocity. I'll explain this in a bit. So now let me copy and paste this chunk of code, which is the function to check for the facing direction change to see whether your player character should change the direction it's facing. Now let me copy and paste another chunk of code, and this will be the function that actually changes the facing direction. Under the late update function, let's add a line of code. If the previous walk velocity is not equal to the current walk velocity, check whether we should be changing the facing direction of our player character. Since previous walk velocity and walk velocity are vector tree data, it stores the axis the player character is currently moving on. If the previous walk velocity is not equal to the current walk velocity, that means it changed its direction. So let's first check for the facing direction change, which is in the first function that we just copied and pasted earlier. So if the walk velocity is zero, it means the player character is not moving. So just end the script here. If the walk velocity dot x is equal to zero, or walk velocity dot z is equal to zero, it means that the player character is currently in motion, either moving left or right, or up or down. Then we'll change its facing direction by passing its walk velocity as an argument in this function. Else, if the previous walk velocity dot x equal to zero, it means it was previously not moving and now it starts moving on the x axis. So now we'll change its facing direction by passing in a new vector tree walk velocity of its x value. Same thing, if the previous walk velocity dot z is equal to zero, it means that it has started moving on the z-axis. Then, we'll pass in a new vector tree of its walk velocity dot z into this function. Else, if whatever the condition is, we'll just change the facing direction by passing in its current walk velocity. This shouldn't happen, that's why we just add a debug code over here. Because we have already accounted for all the different possibilities when the character is in motion, or if it has stopped and started moving again. Since we have been passing a vector tree data in the change facing directions function as an argument, it is here where we decide which direction to face. If direction.z is not equal to zero, that means it's moving on the z axis. Then for the facing, we'll do a conditional statement. If the direction.z is greater than zero, then we'll face the north, else we'll face to the south. Same for the x-axis, if the facing direction.x is greater than zero, 
will be facing the east, ours will face the west. And lastly, to smoothly rotate while moving and changing directions, we will be rotating the transform.local rotation. We'll be using the quotidian.slurp, and in its argument, we'll pass in its current rotation, the rotation that it should be looking towards, using the walk velocity vector tree data, the rotation speed times time delta time. Hang on, I have not copy and pasted this yet. Alright, let's move back up. So under the variables, we'll pass in a public float, the rotation speed. So this is the speed to smoothly rotate towards the moving direction, which you can change in the inspector. Alright, so now this code is fine. There's no more error. Now let's save the script and test it out. Before we do that, let's add a small cube into our player object model so that we can visualize where our player character will be facing. And drop it into the player object. Alright, now when we run the game and test it out, We can see that our player character changes its facing direction beautifully. So beautiful. Even though it's working fine, there seems to be an error over here. The previous walk velocity is never assigned and it always has its default value. Ah, okay, I understand. So basically, over here, we are, only change, we are only checking for the phase change when the current walk velocity is different from the previous walk velocity. So under process input, we have to update its previous walk velocity to the current velocity and that should fix it. In the next tutorial, I'll be showing you how you can use this walking controller in every scenario such as if you are using it to move only up and down or only move left and right or like in the old retro games with strict direction changes that means that there's no smooth rotation like what we just did usually for sprite based game with 4 or 8 walking axis direction Thank you for watching my tutorial, I hope you like it. If you do, please consider subscribing and hit the bell icon. You see it's swinging, the bell icon swinging for you and nobody else, so you better hit it. Hit the bell icon and I'll see you again next time. Thank you.